Melissa Arnett Elliott was born on July 1st, 1971 in Portsmouth, Virginia. A young Melissa, who everyone called Missy, knew from the age of four she wanted to be a performer. She'd always reply, superstar, when asked at school what she wanted to do when she grew up. Even though all her classmates laughed, she remained unfazed. While her father was a United States Marine, the family lived for a while in Jacksonville, North Carolina, in a mobile home community. Missy thrived there and enjoyed the friendships that she made. School, on the other hand, was a different story. She had very little interest in that. It had nothing to do with her intellect, though. In fact, she was sent for an IQ test that revealed her to be classified way above average, so much so that she was made to jump two years ahead of her class. This wasn't a good thing as far as she was concerned, since being away from her friends made her feel isolated. So she did the only thing she knew to do. She purposely failed, thereby forcing the school to return her to her previous class. When her father returned from the Marines, they moved back to Virginia, where they lived in extreme poverty. Their home didn't have any running water or heat and was overrun by rats. Missy even had to do her business in a pot that sat by the bed because they didn't have a bathroom. Eventually, Missy's homemaker mother got a full-time job at the Virginia Electric and Power Company. While the second paycheck coming in did do wonders for managing day-to-day -day life, there was other major turmoil going on within the family that money couldn't help. Missy's father had been physically abusing her mother for years. There was even an incident where he pulled a gun on both her and her mother. One positive thing he did instill in his daughter was his love of music. Missy's father introduced her to the likes of Al Green and Marvin Gaye. As she got older though, her taste changed to Prince, New Edition, and Sheena Easton. She also got the opportunity to perform in front of large crowds. And by large crowds, she was referring to her baby dolls that she arranged in her room with their hands pointing in the air, pretending that they were a stadium full of screaming fans. Another step Missy took to make her dreams of singing stardom come true, on a daily basis, she says, she would ask her mother to go and buy stamps so she could send the letters she wrote to two of her biggest idols, Michael and Janet Jackson. Sadly, they never wrote back. Then, at the tender age of eight, Missy experienced the unthinkable. In her VH1 Behind the Music episode, she revealed that her 16-year-old male cousin began touching her inappropriately. The abuse took place over the course of a year, but Missy never told anyone about it. When she was 14, her mother decided that she had finally had enough and it was time to end her abusive situation. After waiting for her husband to leave one day, she got a moving van, packed everything up, and her and Missy drove away from the house for the last time. Missy says though that she always feared that her father would hunt her mother down and harm her for leaving, but thankfully he accepted it and went on with his life, which included no longer having a relationship with his daughter. Missy graduated high school in 1990, and unlike her classmates who preferred to go off to college or into the military, she had only one thing on her mind, music. The following year, Missy formed an all-female R&B group called Phase E. She recruited her neighborhood friend, Timothy Mosley, later better known as Timbaland, as the group's producer, and began making demos. Then one night, opportunity knocked and the group answered. Jodeci was booked to perform at a Portsmouth nightclub. The girls went to the after party, cornered the guys, and gave them an impromptu performance right then and there. Jodeci member Devante Swing was so taken with their talent that he wanted to sign them immediately. The next thing the girls knew, they were on a plane to New York City to sign with Electra Records through Devante's Swing Mob imprint. They also changed their name to Sista. Timbaland and Devante jointly produced Sista's debut album titled For All the Sistas Around the World in 1994. It included their debut single, Brand New. By the end of 95 though, Swing Mob, also known as The Basement Crew, had folded and many of its members dispersed. It was inevitable after Missy, as well as some of the other members of the collective, had a major falling out with Devante. She hopped on a plane back to Virginia and never looked back. Missy and Timbaland then banded together as a songwriting production team, crafting tracks for acts including 702, Total, and most notably, the late Aaliyah. At this time, being an artist in her own right again wasn't on Missy's radar anymore. She felt that she'd already been there and done that and failed. Her own voice would be eventually heard again as a featured rapper on the remix to Gina Thompson's The Things That You Do, MC Light's hit single, Cole Rock A Party, and New Edition's You Don't Have To Worry. Yeah, yeah. 
After all the attention she received from those appearances, Missy signed a deal to create her own imprint, The Gold Mine Inc., with East West Records, a division of Elektra, for which she would record as a solo artist. Timbaland was again recruited as her production partner. Missy's debut album, Supa Duba Fly, dropped in 1997. Four singles were released, including her debut, The Rain, Supa Duba Fly. Fun fact, Missy used to believe that getting high before sitting down to write a song played a significant role in her success. So she continued to do it for years until she became paranoid that all the big wigs in the industry she was meeting would figure out she was a pothead. She decided then it was time to stop. Her second effort, 1999's The Real World, included the singles She's a Bitch, All In My Grill, and a remix to Hot Boys, which would become her first top five hit on the Billboard Hot 100. Missy released four more albums over the next six years and made it into the top 10 on the Hot 100 with several tracks. Get Your Freak On, which garnered her first Grammy Award for Best Rap Solo Performance. Work It, that got her another Grammy for Best Female Rap Solo Performance. Gossip Folks, and Lose Control, the latter of which gave her yet another Grammy win for Best Short Form Music Video. She also played a major role in producing the 2001 cover and number one smash hit, Lady Marmalade, by Christina Aguilera, Lil' Kim, Maya, and Pink. After Missy's mother had a major health scare, it motivated her to take her own health more seriously. After a hospital visit of her own, Missy knew that it was time for her to lose the weight she'd been carrying for many years. In 2015, she performed in front of the biggest crowd of her career at the Super Bowl halftime show with Katy Perry. The performance was well received and boosted digital sales of her work that week. It also became the most watched Super Bowl halftime show in NFL history. For over a decade, Missy's been trying to get her seventh studio album out, but has continued to be met with extensive delays. She finally did release an album in the form of an EP in 2019. Iconology features a variety of musical genres that cover the span of her career as an artist and received favorable reviews from critics. Years earlier, she revealed that a big part of the reason for her absence from the music scene was due to her battle with Graves' disease. The illness first began affecting her motor skills, followed by a string of scary symptoms, dizzy spells, lumps in her throat, mood swings, hair loss, a fast heart rate, and bulging eyes. But after undergoing radiation combined with medication, she was able to get things under control. As far as her personal life is concerned, Missy has never confirmed nor denied dating anyone, male or female, nor her sexual orientation. She has been rumored to have had relationships with numerous celebs, such as Lil' Kim, Trina, DeBrat, and even her production partner, Timbaland. Back in 2008, she told People Magazine that she definitely wanted to be a mom one day, but wasn't interested in going through the process of a natural birth and instead was very open to adoption. Missy's legacy is undeniable and her will to keep making music is unstoppable. In 2019, she became the first female rapper to be inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame and also received the MTV Video Vanguard Award. Two years later, she was honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame.